Welcome to What's New in Ale for 2024 Wave 1, the Hacker Edition. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, it has become a tradition that we get a new version of Business Central every six months. And uh, April 1st is just around the corner um, from when I'm recording this video, at least. Uh, but for some reason, Microsoft kind of dropped part of uh version well version what 2024 we one that's the that's the marketing label um internally in business central we talk about version 24 internally inside the ale world we talk about version 13 uh, and it's kind of confusing um forget the marketing label because that's how it's done right now. Marketing, marketing can change. Uh, version 24 is basically since version one that came in 95. Uh, so, so that one has been incremented uh, as it should be over over many, many years. Um, version 13 was because it, you can think about ale that at some point we got ale and the ale compiler came when we had NAV 2018. Uh, so think about that as version zero. That, that's the where, where it all started. Uh, so if you do the math then, that means that version BC version 24 is the compiler version 13. I did not come up with this, so uh, yell on the comments at somebody else. Anyway, um, what happened was that version 13 of the compiler, the AL compiler that we use every day, dropped before April 1st. Um, so I thought, then we might as well use that and, and take a look at it. I think when you see this video, it has become April 1st and stuff might get released. I'm actually not sure because it's Easter in, in, in Denmark. Uh, so... Um, Anyway, but let's get to it because this is probably going to take a bit. Um, so here is, usually I, at this point in time, I go to the docs page. Uh, there's actually a better page right now. So I'll go to, go to that one. And that page you find inside Visual Studio Code. So if I go to extensions and I find the uh, whatever extensions I have installed, including I have installed the AL language extension for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. And you can see that, oops, this is version 13.0.971907. Um, so it's here. Um, and if I click on this, we cannot see the name because this one is weirdly formatted. And if I make it smaller, we can see that the version number is version 13. And I'm not on the pre-release anything. This is just this dropped as the regular version. So it's released and has been for a few days now. Um, actually, it says here behind my, my head that it was supposed to release on the 26th. Uh, so that's interesting. Anyway, what the, the, the team behind the compiler at Microsoft are really, really good at is actually writing a change log. Um, so I thought, why don't we just use that one instead? Because they have probably seen that I typically at the end of these video fire fire up the um, the C sharp dot net uh, decompiler to go poke and see if there's something that they forgot to mention. Uh, so they are they're they're getting pretty good at at actually documenting everything. So we might as well use their list. Uh, so ignore what's on, on docs right now and, and let's take a look at this one. So, Biz Central 2024 release wave one, version 13. So this one does not state that it's version 24, just to uh, complete the confusion. The version 13 of the compiler. So the very first one here is huge. Support for multiple extension to the same target and an extension and target in the same app. What does that mean? That means that you can, let's say you have an app and it has a table. 
and you need an extra field in the table. But in reality, it's kind of a sub module, but you want to keep it as one app because that's just easier and, and more like that. So now you can actually create a table extension object in the same app. So you extend in the table you have. Uh, and all this is just uh, syntactical uh, sugar. So it, it, it's not going to go into the extent. It's just going to be one table on SQL. So one table on SQL. If you if you have the if the app o owns the base table, you extend the base table. Then it will only be one table in SQL. Um, so this means that a lot of the and and and. Without naming any names, a lot of partners have built huge, complicated multi-app setups uh, and, and gotten into some, some bad performance and, and some weird complexities that all could be solved in code. So this customer needs this module, that module, and that module, and then they can, in source, actually build just one app. Uh, so so there's there are some interesting pieces for this. What, I think I will use it for is be able to uh, organize things better. Uh, and, and again, this actually goes back to this kind of the concept of sub modules. Um, or maybe you create a branch and you have a, you know, a commit, but something you pull it in, whatever. Um, I think it's, it's huge. Uh, I have asked for this for for a few years if not for a few years a few years ago and and they smiled and said no and uh hey at least they smiled i mean now they, they said yes yeah, yes but i we even have to re-ask them um so there are some rules and i think that's important to mention here um so the base object cannot reference members from the extension objects. So let's say that you 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 create something that looks like sales line. So you have you have a unit price in the base app, then you have quantity in one table extension and, and line amount in the other table table extension. Then if you look at it, if you write code on uh, on validated unit price, you cannot see the quantity field. Uh, because that is sitting in the extension object, and you cannot see the extension object from the base object. You can see the base object. You can see the base object from the extension object, but not the other way around. Um, so, some interesting things that, and, and in real, relative thinking through my example I just gave you, this won't make any sense because I, I do not believe that. One extension object can see things in another extension object to the same table. I don't know. We will have to try that at some point. That's probably a video. Um, extension objects can reference members from other extension objects in the same app only if the other extension object has a lower object ID. Ah, there you go. It's, it's even solved. Maybe we should do a video anyway, but, but good documentation. Excellent. Um, so suddenly, <laughs> in 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 the in the world of uh, oh, we want to get rid of object numbers. Now we just got even more dependent on them. Ha. Anyway, uh, let's go continue to the next one. Uh, changes to the AL table proxy generator, the ALTP Gen X. Um, and this is kind of weirdly documented, and uh, and they. They, there's a link to a page that might be updated, or might not be, aka.ms slash ALTP gen. Um, so this executable used to have a uh, an app registration for CRM, oh, Dynamics 365 Sales, blah, 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 whatever it's called today. Uh, uh, no longer. Now you have to create your own app registration and use that uh, instead of you could use Microsoft app registration. Otherwise, kind of the same thing. Um, 
Script CSS image path on control add-ins can be relative to the control add-in source file. Nice. Uh, up until now, you have to, when you, whenever you specified scripts or style, style sheets or whatever, you had to give it the entire path, which was annoying, especially if you, for some reason, I need to reuse this piece of code and then you copy it in and then it sits somewhere else in the structure or just call something else and stuff like that. Um, so now it can be relative to the folder location, which nice, nice. Um, it's an example of that, more examples. Okay, new create AL project button. Wait, no matter, normally let's do normally we'll go up and then we we'll say it'll go here. If that's too far away, now that we open it, we can go here. It's the exact same thing. It might just be easier to uh, to locate the very first time. And uh, it's not like this is, a, this is a crowded area anyway, so uh, yeah. Let's, very, very nice. Consider it of them. Um, isolated storage, new method overloads for use with the secret text type. Well, it's kind of a, a, a no brainer. Uh, now that we have secret text, which I don't think we did a video on. Let's let me know if you want that. Uh, isolated storage. There is a video on that. Um, Naturally, that that some of these secrets that you hold in secret text might be stored in isolated isolated storage, also because that's where you store your secrets. Um, so excellent. AL Doc supports overriding files. Um, we have a video on AL Docs. Uh, it keeps improving, and uh, there are some weird things uh, where something that wasn't overrided. Um, Apparently uh, fixed. Uh, generated documentation can be updated or augmented by including markdown files during build. A, a, a summary can be added during the AL doc build process to the following enum. Include a markdown. Do, 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 do. That's, yeah, I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the other one. And this one is interesting. Um, support ended for debugging Business Central server version less than 20. Business Central servers released before the April 2022 release version 20 cannot be debugged with AL extension package versions that are greater or equal to version 13. So what does that mean? That means that if you are on version 19 and older, you are in for a more complicated life because the one we have installed here, you can't do that anymore. So what you have to do now will be to uh, manually install and, and keep a version of, of, of VS code that is locked to the, uh, to the old, uh, old compiler. Um, That's gonna make some people uh, unhappy, uh, and, and 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 not me because all my customers are in the cloud, so they're on the newest version anyway. Uh, but this is this is still interesting uh, that they made this decision. I don't know, but they have probably better numbers on this than 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 I have, uh, but up until now, you can kind of use the same AL, AL extension for everything, and that's no longer the case. Um, so yeah, interesting. Folding using, is now possible to use the editor folding imports by default setting when set to true, it collapses all the using statements when a file is opened. Uh, the new namespace support uh, that we got in 2023 uh, can kind of collapse all uh, that noise at the top of the 
I think the easiest way to do that is probably to open something. Open something. See all these. This is a DAL file, so I don't think the collapsing works here. Uh, but um, yeah. Can become noisy, especially something like this where there's like two pages, 63. Yes, so so 61 lines of using. Anyway, let me, let's get back to. Uh oh, that was that was not smart. Uh, okay, huh. that was pretty cool. It's new also key on database. I knew. AL uh, database API have disabled reaping keys within the current uh, transaction. So far, that's a non prem feature, so I don't have much interest in that. Um, and, and, and this one, also kind of a candidate to the in the top three of the most important parts um, tooltips on table fields. Introduced Tooltips on table. Tooltips on table views. Introduce the tooltip property on table views with like the caption. Anyway, so you can specify a tooltip on the table, and that will then be shown on on fields unless there is a tooltip on the page that will override it. Uh, that is pretty nice. File uploads in drag and drop. Add a new action type and new file type for handling uploading files. Uh, and and. <laughs> This is the upload multiple files, uh, which is interesting. So instead of you can just upload one file, you can upload multiple files. I still think that Microsoft is doing drag and drop wrong. Uh, I, I think I'm doing it right. Uh, I think the you have to click somewhere to get the, the drop zone is truly when, why do I have to click at first place, right? Uh, so, I still think that the right way would be to assign a random part of the UI, not a random, but a very some a part of the UI to be a drop zone, and then you can just drop there, and that's an action. It, it's I, I do it in the in the SharePoint connector where the fact box is my drop zone, uh, but that's with some. Uh, DOM manipulation and stuff like that, but but users love it, and instead of having to, and you know, there's typically at least two click. You have to click something, and then you click the the menu, uh, and that gives you the the drop zone. And if you're not interested in drop, then you have to click on to actually select the file. So so the 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 added drop zone that comes in the middle seems like. It's not a very UX friendly solution. Uh, uh, I, I think it can be done way more elegant and way more efficient for for users. Uh, because if you want to select a file, now you have right now you have an extra click to to get to the file. If you want to drop, then the whole idea with dropping is that you don't have to prepare the drop. You drop, you just drop, right? Uh, if you are in the right spot, you just drop. Um, anyway. That's my opinion on drops. If you if you want that, here's a little nice bonus: uh, placeholder text on page fields. So we have instructional text and instructional text, multi language, uh, where text that are used in the uh, teaching guides uh, on pages, but now those fields can also be a a, a placeholder. So you ha if you have an empty field. You'll have in in uh, in gray something written. So here here's something you can put in a field. In many cases, by having a placeholder, you don't need to have a caption. Uh, so you you don't need to use screen um, screen real estate on caption because if a field has a value, then quite often it's it's very clear what the field is without. So let's say we have a field for the address. Um, if it has a value, we can see that it's an address, right? If if without a value, we use the field say it's and then it says address in the field. We don't need a caption, so it's very interesting. So far, this works for text, big text, code, and 
Gut. Um, and it can become super complicated if you have like a, a like a, a decimal field because now then we have to figure out is there a zero in the field or or is it empty so we could put a, a, a put a, a placeholder text in there so it makes sense that they have only done it for these fields prompt guides prompt dialogue the page type for uh, to creating a co-pilot prompts um, you can define a prompt guide which contains a list of predefined text prompts. This allows users to easily select a prompt guide to use as input to generate context rather than creating their own prompt from scratch, which is kind of natural that the next evolution that uh, after we are done with all the uh, the mass hysteria of we can write all these prompts, then uh, users realize, hey, we gotta write all these prompts, uh, and, and who have time to sit down and write half a novella to to get the computer to do it right? So, give me some prompts that I can just use, um, and uh, you know the the prompt dialog has a lot of attention right now with Microsoft, uh, so so it gets a. a I think it, and I have not tried this yet. So uh, I think this is some kind of floating bar that is very, very cool. Uh, we should do a video on prom guides. Um, lots of examples on that, uh, and we have prompt actions. Um, again, all these are basically just an action on a on a page. Uh, it's more of how this is rendered in in the, in the UI. Okay. Oh, we're already at over twenty minutes. Here we go. New cookie data type. Cookies are still a thing. Uh, also for authentication, uh, which made communicating with certain uh, web services is kind of annoying. Uh, but now HTTP client have a um, have support for this. So, so you have a, uh, a cookie content in both response and request messages. And I think there is another Maybe I, I think I saw something that's actually not on this list, but uh, let's see. Okay, so those are the the headline worthy changes. Then we got a bunch of uh, App Source Cup uh, updates here. Don't not going through them. A list of GitHub issues that have been solved, uh, and. Um, I don't think there's anything that we need to mention here. Uh, and miscellaneous small fixes and the new warnings and uh, let's see. I don't remember anyone that I was actually wanting to mention, but. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Here's my my biggest. This one, I was this one was I was looking at. This was my biggest uh, issue with version twenty three. Um, so when version twenty three came along, I said yes. Now queries can be in the UI uh, with the with the an, uh, analysis view and so on, and you can just add a usage category in there and tell me. Awesome. So I build in. Uh, query support uh, in, in the simple object assigner so people could design their own queries super easy and then boom and they were in tell me and they also kind of report on screen but the boom never happened because they never showed up anywhere uh, they never showed up in tell me uh, and 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 I talked with Microsoft there was not a bug no no it worked as designed and everything and then at some point they realized there was a bug uh, and, but apparently it was a bug that required RPX to be recompiled, so they never backported the fix to version 23. But here it is in 24, and that means that now simple object designer customers can now create queries and get it 
to show up and tell me and use them uh, as, as report on screen. So I look forward to that. Um, and another thing here, added support for having lists of in and out streams. Uh, there's still a few data types I think that are missing in uh, in in lists and, and dictionaries. Um, so maybe we'll get that at some point. I am not sure I can still create. Can I create a list of? So I can now create a list of in stream. Boom. Can I create a dictionary of code 20 comma in stream? I can't. Can I create a dictionary of code 20 comma record ref? No. That's the one we're missing. Actually, that's the one we're missing. That's the one. Can I can I do it with a uh, with a hard coded one? No, not either. But this one, this is the one. That this is the one we need. We really, really need this one. Anyway, back to oh oh now I, I, I did the same thing again. Uh change lock. Anyway, that was the end of it. Um Let's just super quick, uh, because I did do the usual thing where I took the compiler and ran it through a uh, decompiler so we can, the, the, the nice thing about this, so, so when you know, I've actually go back here just to explain what I'm doing. Um, so when, when I create an, an app, so here's my, my app.json, um, I tell what runtime this app should run on. Meaning that, so so let's say that I have a customer on prem. I don't have, but anyway, uh, maybe they are on, let's, let's go with something. They are on 2022. So I said this to 9.0. And now the language features and, and whatever in AL uh, is the only things that are available are the ones that works on this version. So see if I go all the way back and say receive version four, then that did not have the resource exposure policy section. Um, so everything inside the AL compiler is tagged with a version when it's available. So if when if we uh, go look behind the scene we can actually go in and then we can search for let's see 4.0 oh, so something is tagged with 4.0 that's not interesting but but let's look for stuff that is tagged with 13.0 oh. so now we have the list of uh, of everything that in code has been changed to uh as in this is in in, in 13.0 uh, and let's just do this super quick so we can just look at the titles here uh because i'm running out of time um and the other list was pretty number sequence class i actually think that was uh, if I go back to this guy, um, I saw something with number sequence. I, or maybe I didn't. Number series. Okay. Something happened. Um, some new functions on the number series functionality. Um, maybe we need to talk about number series or something. I don't think I ever have done a video on number series. Uh, let me know. Uh, 
isolated storage, we know that HTTP request message type, we can see that here is a get cookie, set cookie, remove cookie. Uh, we have the same thing on the, on the response. There is a get cookie. Um, on HTTP client class, that was what I'm saying that there is a use response cookie. So one thing that Microsoft did not put in the, at least maybe it was on the, uh, on the mis miscellaneous thing. I actually didn't see that. Um, so there's some cookie support there. The file upload stuff, we saw that. Dialog class. Um, this was the log internal error is now uh, obsoleted. Use uh, log message instead, I think. Please, cons please consider using session.log message in instead, yeah. Uh, database class of the alter key function. Uh, cookie class, we have that. Object parser. Let's see where we are. The whole move to move, th move to move from. So, because I'm still actually not sure about that thing. At some point, I need to figure out what that is. Um, and then we have the uh, the tooltip on 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 tables. Um, tooltip and the instruction set. Um, what was the last one? Trigger. File upload action. So this list is pretty consistent with the with the other documentation. That's, that's super nice. Maybe next time I don't even need to do this. Uh, and I think I've said that multiple times. I end up doing it anyway. That was half an hour. Um, guys, thanks for uh, for watching. Um, let me know which patch of this you want me to put on the videos to-do list. Uh, the, uh, the whole thing about extension objects to extend the same... Uh, the, the, the same app is, is very interesting. Um, the only way I wish now though is that we, on my wish list, why don't we say it out loud, is uh, partial code units. I have a uh, some 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 of my apps have some big big code units, and they are big because they kind of share the same object the same fields and so on so having splitting it up to true multi piece code units is the, just a pain uh, but it's also a pain to work with a code unit on three four five thousand lines of code uh, just to you no know, everything gets sluggish uh, and so on so so on my list is 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 not an actual code unit extension because that's something else but but a partial code unit um but no a man can hope uh anyway go check out this video there's some cool ale hacking in that one uh i'll see you there take care bye